Well, I'm getting ready to start the uh, name weave. But when I was uh, looking at the videos, it looked like I didn't get a very clear shot of my diamonds. It seems like if I try to move the camera in too close, it's, it's just uh, fuzzy. So let me try it like this before I go on into it, doing the weave. And as you can see, I've, I have terminated my wrap down here. Now on the name weave, it's going to be on the zero axis of the rod which I think I said earlier for reference that's the part that sticks up that's the part you, you're looking at when you're fishing uh, so on the bait caster the real seats on the zero axis so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna use a standard seven thread name weave um, you can get the layout anywhere online a long time ago I I just printed it out and then I laminated it so I can just pick up the card and see it if I don't remember it most of it you'll find you just remember but um, you know a G or an R something like that it, it helps me to look at the at the wrap design and some of my alter a little bit so that the letters aren't quite as blocky anyway I'm gonna start out and on this one I'm gonna use a blue background so I'm gonna start out by getting me several wraps of blue on the rod and then I'm going to I'm going to use white for the lettering on this one because the white will stand out against the blue pretty well. And uh, it's seven threads, so I get seven pieces of white thread. Start out 18 inches long or so, and then I, I tie a knot in one end to get the wrap started. So as you're figuring making your wrap, you want to remember that you want about the same distance in the front before the lettering starts as you have in the back after the lettering ends and as I start the wrap these threads I will clip one at a time and trim one at a time while I'm laying out letters that way I get out here at the end and I have a nice smooth transition to the rod nothing rough and I've effectively uh, terminated my wrap on both ends in a way that's attractive. So I need both hands, so I'm going to put the camera back in its uh, mount and get started. Well, I've taken my seven pieces of white thread, tied a knot in one end of it, and gotten it under a couple of bands here on my blue and then as I work my way up the rod um, I'm gonna be sure my threads don't don't cross over you know they stay nice and flat and to do that just to start I'm gonna get it good and straight and put a little piece of tape on it out here towards the end Oh, 
So anyway, now that I've got it started straight, I'm, uh, I'm going to get maybe an inch or so up here, three quarters of an inch maybe, because I want it to be the same length down here where I'm terminating my wrap. There we go. Now I'm making this a little bit long. You'll notice I've got my mark for my first thread, or first guide right here. Um, so anyway, um, and it's going to be a long name. I'm going to weave in there crappie wrangler. So, look at my chart I have right here. Flip it over to C. It says 1 through 7. So when you're counting that, the 1... Here's number one. Here's number seven. So, one through seven on the left. So I'll flip it over here on the left. Make a wrap around. And there we go. Now, I'm going to have one and seven left. and two through six on the right and I could do this with a shorter pieces of thread but it just is easier for me to work with the longer pieces and trim them later so anyway there we go there's one wrap around and what's it say one two three four five so I'm gonna have five bands right here going this way to make my C so there's two three and a little space here straighten that out four and five now my chart tells me numbers one through seven to the right so I'm going to put all the threads on the tip side of the rod and go around it now I just made a C so I'm going to straighten it up and generally I'm going to do this at least once sometimes a couple of times so I'm going to pull each thread through one at a time pull them down nice and straight I want my name to go down the rod in a straight fashion. I, just like I don't want my diamonds crooked, I don't want my name crooked. And I'm also being careful with my pick tool not to stab the center of the thread or do anything that might make the thread unravel. So you're going to have three bands between the letters. So there's a C. And next is a R. Uh, I should mention these will all be capital letters. Now an R is just slightly more complicated. You know a C or a D or an O is easy. But an R requires a little bit more effort. 
or it does for me. So, one through seven on the left on my R. So that is going to be like that. And I'm going to look ahead and know I, I need the number one thread and the number four thread to the left on my next go around. There's two and three. There's number four. There we go. And I'm going to make one more rotation. And I'm going to straighten my threads out right quick. Make sure everything stays nice and neat. And on the next one, I'm going to start with my diagonal leg on the R. So I'm going to pull thread number five over to the left. There's seven, six, and there's number five. Pull that one to the left. And this may not work well as I noticed with my previous parts, when I try to zoom in or get too close, the picture gets fuzzy. But there's a C and an R right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is cut one of my other threads. So I'm going to begin terminating this. Um... Let me roll that around, see where I'm at. Get my pick tool under a thread and take a straight razor and cut that puppy right there. Looks like I got two threads instead of one. And I am being uh, very gentle with my pick tool because it comes to a point and I don't want to scratch my rod with my pick tool. And being as I've got two green threads on the bottom, I know that I'm going to have a corresponding green threads on the top. So one of them came kind of easy to get to, so I'm going to pull that off. Come on around. And let me flip my thread out of the way. There we go. There's that one. And there's those two. So, now fortunately, your carriage has a thread tensioner, so you can work back and forth just a little bit. Now I'm going to take these two and cut them off close. Being careful not to cut 
my blue thread. At this point, if I made a mistake and cut my blue thread, now that I've started uh, trimming off my green thread, that would just be disastrous. I would lose a big portion of the wrap. And it's looking like my razor blades are dull and I need to get some new razor blades. All right. So there's my CNR, CRA. It's going to say crappie wrangler and A is going to be easy. So I've got my three wraps here. So I'm going to flip this side over. Flip all of them. To the left and then back to the right and take number one and number four to the left there we go And let me make sure everything is nice and straight. And you can see my number seven has come up a little bit. So I want to straighten that out. And laying these letters out. It's not difficult, but for me it's time consuming now, you know, young guy moves a lot faster, can probably do this a lot quicker. There we go. Everything right, everything's right. So let me take a moment and grab a fresh safety razor and these are plain old safety razors you buy them in a pack of a hundred and at this point I'm gonna cut a couple more threads from my other wrap from my actual pattern decorative wrap pattern I'm gonna grab two greens from the top and two greens from the bottom oh well, I probably error on the side of caution I don't get too quick on any of this I'd rather it take longer than it needs to than to have a mistake now the whole idea here and what I'm doing now is just having one or two threads at a time terminate down here so it makes a clean termination and this name weave is is nothing special it's nothing exclusive to me just about every rod builder knows how to do this and just in case anyone doesn't This chart come right out of my Dell Clements book and I didn't copy and paste it out of there I sat there and and typed it up on a sheet of paper all right go around again
I've got these two bands of copper and I don't know if you can tell on camera but this copper thread is actually a size D and the green metallic is a size A and when I first was reading about making custom fishing rods it says that metallic thread was more difficult to work with than just standard thread well I like the look of metallic so that was all I used for a long time so then when I work with non-metallic like it's blue it just really seems easy so now I need a couple of peas so I'm going to start with one through seven to the left. Go around one time and then I'm going to need uh, one and four to the left and the rest of them to the right. my second pass around on my P and I'm going to straighten up all my threads to the right kind of just making sure everything is staying okay so that is the third band on my P I need one more got three of the greens which I usually don't like to get more than two at a time but apparently I cut three when I only thought I cut two there we go cut a couple more threads.
then that looks like the rest of my E done. So let's pull that around. So there's my name weed done. Three quarters of an inch here. And go there, so I'm gonna terminate that. Make sure my pull loop will move because that's an awful lot of tight thread. There we go. Maybe a couple more. Okay, now I don't want the tag end of this thread popping up when I pull it through, so I'm just going to lay it out here and measure it so far, which is more than enough to hold the wrap still. And there it is. Now I'm going to take and trim this off with the razor blade and then I'll I'll run just a little bit more of the blue thread over it to dress it up. So I've got a pretty clean trim with that razor blade. You can see a little bit right there. And so I'm just gonna Take my blue thread, run a short wrap around there. Got her started, so let me go ahead and trim this other end off. And 
get my pull loop started. like plenty enough. And once again, I'm going to measure it and trim that so my tag end doesn't come out of the thread. And go ahead and pull it through. And there we go. A nice decorative wrap. Terminated on both ends. Nice and clean, nice and neat. Anyway, old school way for a decorative wrap. And um, I'll trim this thread off down here and I'll show that here in a little bit. Go on the other side. So I'm gonna trim a bunch of this off. Get her down to where I can put the rear grip on. And then I'll put the rear grip on and glue it on. And there you see. And I've already pre-selected a winding check. You can see it right here. And it fits fairly snug. And I'm gonna push it on down to the foregrip. And then push it down carefully so that I'm not moving the threads on my decorative wrap. And there we have the real seat and the winding check glued in place. And I am going to Come and check this every now and then to make sure I'm not getting any glue expand out in this area, which would be rare. And it's it's rare because I've by now can just guess about how much that glue is going to expand. And I've had this bottle a while. I've done two or three rods with it. So this bottle expands slower and less than a brand new bottle would. Anyway, this will have the, the rear end, the part below the first guide done, except for the epoxy. Well, I had jumped the gun just a little bit on that all done stuff down here. I had forgotten to put my hook keeper on. And there's a... Lots of different styles of hook keepers you can get. Um, I 
I use one that's just a little bit bigger just because it's easy so I'm going to put a little piece of tape on my hook keeper and tape it in place first just one end of it just to get it started well I want it to look as uniform as possible so I'm gonna split my hook keeper on the bottom side of the rod the part opposite the reel I'm going to split it on this bottom diamond and I can either start down here and go up that way with the thread or I can start here and come towards the tip for me it's just easier to start on top of the hook keeper and move towards the tip so that's what I'm going to do And it would probably be easier if I'd let the glue dry on that foregrip first. But I didn't. I just slapped the glue on there and then started putting the hook keeper on so as I can get done. And the reason it would be easier is because I could spin the rod by the foregrip. And even though there is a foot pedal, there are times I just spin it by hand. So I'm going to get it started nice and straight. Cut off my tag end, as I've done on my other wraps. And then I'm going to watch it as I spin it to see that I've got this edge in a straight line. And I do. Now I don't have a great deal of distance to throw thread on here, so I'm going to get my pull loop on here fairly quickly. And I'm going to slide it in right about there so on anything you're putting on it's got feet like uh, the hook keeper or uh, guides you don't want your pull loop right next to the foot you want it a little bit a ways you know at least a 90 degrees off from it because there'll be a little space right here and it won't set real real tight so it could come loose while you're working on the rod. And as you can see, it winds on there quite easily. And I could use the foot pedal, but I'm not putting on enough thread to have a need for it. Now you can see the end of my foot and I'm going to pay attention to coming off of that nice and smoothly like that a couple more spins and you can see I'm well past the end of the foot so I can go ahead and terminate my thread and now for the beginners out there I would suggest letting that foregrip dry first. As a beginner, you don't want to be working with, with wet glue or having wet glue while you're working on something else. It, it, the best it could do is cause problems. Uh, for those that have done this for a long time, well, 
they don't need my instructions. And as I demonstrated before, I'm going to lay my thread back against where I have my pull loop in and measure to cut it short so the end of the thread doesn't expose. Now if the end of the thread does expose, it's not a major catastrophe, it just causes one more step. Basically I would reach down with a pair of fingernail clippers and clip it off. Alright, so there it is. One side on. And you see I have just a little bit of glue from the tape right there. And that's not really acceptable to me, so I'm going to get me a little alcohol on a cotton ball and wipe that glue off. And it comes off. And the reason for wiping that off is you don't know if that glue will have any reaction to our finishing epoxy. And we don't want to have to be making excuses for a, a bad spot on our finish when we get all done. And that's cleaned up pretty good. And of course I've got a little bit of fuzz on there from the cotton ball. And I'm going to be sure and get that off. And there we go. So, I may get a little thread on the other foot on the hook keeper. Every time you're starting a thread, you're paying attention that while you're starting it like that, you see I'm just trying to jump over a little bit. Trying to jump over and cross over to one of the other threads. And we don't want it to jump between two other threads. We want it to follow the line so it looks nice and neat. And I'll go ahead and cut this tag in off now. Well, and when I use the foot pedal, it just jumps over every time. Let's do it like that. And now I'll get my pull loop in there. And then what's happened here is I don't have this little section here exactly straight. I'm going to it kind of curves towards the tip a little bit, so I'm going to straighten it with my burnishing tool. And 
and it's right in here. And there we go. Looks like I got it straightened out. Now there's the end of the foot on my hook keeper. And there I've crossed over it. And you see it's nice and neat flow. And I should mention, and I've done this off camera, but uh, I've taken uh, the feet on my hook keeper and the feet on my guides to my bench grinder and just ground them down just a little bit on the end because they'll have like a little hump where they where the foot touches the the rod blank and you'll have trouble getting your thread to jump over that little hump so I'll take and grind that little hump off so that my thread will make a smooth transition up on top of that foot And a hook keeper is a minor thing, but especially if you're building a rod for someone else, they think that hook keeper really makes that a good custom rod. So you want to use a hook keeper. On a spinning rod, you want to be careful about where you place that hook keeper because the line could slap against the hook keeper affecting the casting distance and when I make a spinning rod I will illustrate that alright we're looking good I don't see any glue coming out but I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down one time just for good measures And of course wiping it down means I'm looking it over real close and examining for any mistake and of course there is none. And now you see I've got my two bands kind of spread equal distance from these two diamonds and if you roll the rod over 180 degrees you see the hook keeper split in the center of that diamond and it just makes everything look uniform.